Welcome back. In this video, Steve's going to spend a little bit of time talking about selections. Obviously, having the ability to select objects is very important when working with your scenes inside of Houdini. Now, we are going to break selections down, though. Uh, up until now, we've just been working with objects. We really have not been working with the components that make up the objects. So in this video, you're going to get your first taste of some of these components, things such as points and primitives and edges. So we will be looking at those. So that is the goal of this video. With that, I'm going to hand it on over to Steve. Thank you very much. So uh, before we can begin looking at selections, it'd be really useful to have some objects to select. So I'm going to create a box by control clicking on the box in the shelf. That'll drop him in at the origin. I'm just going to translate him off to the side. We'll create a sphere and a tube as well. I'm also going to hide out our grid by clicking on the grid button top right of our view pane, just so that we have a very clear viewport to work with. So we've got three objects, and how do we go about uh, selecting between them? Well, we need to be using the select tool. We can grab the select tool by left clicking on the select tool icon up here, or you can push S on the keyboards, and that's the hotkey to bring up the select tool. Now, even though I've talked about this in the past, let's go ahead and uh, manipulate our network editor so that they can see all three of these object nodes. There we go. So, or geometry nodes. So now that we've got these guys available, I just want you to, once again, I'm just driving this in, I want you to make sure that you make the association with when you select on one of these objects over here, that particular geometry node is going to become highlighted. Sure. So uh, by single left clicking on any of our objects, we will select that object both in the viewport, but you'll notice also that the node has been selected. So we can quickly select between our cube, sphere, and tube. And we can also single click over in the network editor itself to, to select those objects. Yeah. You also notice if we single click not on any of these objects, we'll lose our selection and deselect everything. Now, we don't just have the ability of single left clicking. We can use that in combination with some keyboard uh, sh uh, shortcuts. Mm -hmm. um, those shortcuts include shift for selecting and toggling our selection. So if something's not selected and you shift click on it, that'll uh, select it. If it is selected and you shift click on it, it will deselect it. We can use control shift. That'll always add to our selection. So even if you control shift again on something selected, it will just stay selected. Control shift on something that's not selected, and we will select it. And finally, control and left click. That will remove from our selection. So if we control left click on any of these guys, we'll remove him from our selection. Now, it's worth pointing out that we saw the correspondence between our objects in the view and our nodes over here in the network pane. We have the ability to turn off um, the select flag for the selectable flag for a node and that means we won't be able to select it in the view pane. So that's the little green uh, flag on the left hand side of our node and if we turn that off say for our sphere I can select the, uh, the box, I can select the tube I am single left clicking on the sphere and we can't select him because we turned off his selectable flag. As soon as I turn that back on I now can select him. So that's dealing with selecting objects using a single left click. We can also use left click drag to select multiple objects in one click. By default, left click drag will bring up a box selection or a marquee selection. And that does work in combination with those keyboard hotkeys as well. So if we have shift held down, we can toggle our selection. If we have control shift, we'll just be adding to our selection. And if we have control, we'll remove from our selection. We also have the ability to use those uh, keyboard um, short, uh, shortcuts and turn them basically on permanently. If we right click on our select tool over here on the left hand side, you can see that add to selection, toggle selection and remove selection and their corresponding hotkeys. They can be turned on permanently by selecting one of these. So let's use toggle because that's going to be a great example. Yeah, it's just changing the default nature of the left mouse button click. Yeah. So now uh, I'm not touching anything on the keyboard, so I'm only dealing with the mouse. And if we single left click on an object, it will select him. Single left click again, and it toggles the selection. You'll also notice our arrow in the viewer has the, um, the icons changed from our default to indicate that we are toggling our selection. This is the same icon that will uh, appear if we were to use the keyboard uh, hotkey to bring up um, this particular toggle selection mode. Now I'm going to be working the majority of the time with replace selection, that is our default selection, and I'm just going to then use the keyboard hotkeys to put us temporarily into those selection modes. 
We also have the ability to change her how single left click drag works. Currently we were using box picking. We can see when we single left click drag we get a marquee, we get a box. We can put it into lasso, which if you single left click drag you get to draw out a region that we wish to select in. And we also have brush that allows us to paint which uh, objects we'd like to select. Which doesn't always work beautifully. Not always, it's still slightly buggy in the current build of Houdini. So um, that's dealing with objects. So now let's... Uh... Before moving on, I want to go ahead and show them how to secure selections as well. Because oh, okay. that, that can be very valuable. Yeah. Um, so if you want to just demonstrate basically the hotkey equals or they can also get to it from uh, right click. So if we well. right click down, we can come to secure selection. You can see that that's equals. So let's grab a selection of these two guys. I'm going to push equals on the keyboard and that will secure our selection. That's right. So now if we try... Uh, Oh, well, that was. It didn't seem to take. Let's make it's, sure that, yeah. that was actually on. I wonder if it's. Uh... That's very interesting. That is actually. very interesting. Because generally that doesn't let us uh, deselect when we have that on. Well, actually, let's do this. Hang on. Let's get off of our select tool, though. Let's go to one of our actual tools to like move around. Now ah, try yeah. To, because yeah, yeah it's, it's um, when we're, we're still on, in a select mode when we're using handles. Exactly. Fantastic. So yeah, again, if you try to marquee select or you, you just I can't cannot. even get a marquee. I'm single left click dragging and I'm not getting it. So just keep in mind if you and I've seen a lot of beginners with this uh, issue in the past. In fact, a long time ago, this used to be like default. Everything was oh, secure. Wow. So if you come in and find that for some reason you can't select something, uh, don't forget to uh, turn off your secure selection. Let's go and show what happens if secure selection is turned off, but we are still using transform and now I can select various objects precisely fantastic so with that we can now take a look into components we were using we were selecting objects because up here we had the select object mode um, activated down one button from that we have the geometry uh, select mode which deals with selecting different components I will point out that underneath him we have particles and dynamics but we won't be looking at those in this video so let's single left click on add geometry select mode and that's going to put us into component selection the first thing you'll notice if we come down here to our path gadget and up here we can see that we've jumped inside that geometry node we're now down at geometry level dealing with SOPs exactly this is yeah I really want you guys to pay very close attention to this geometry and where we are at the moment we are inside of the box object so if we were to come back up here look at that we're now back up at the object level so we end up going inside of this to deal with the actual surface operations that make up this geometry when we switch down into a component mode. So now we're in geometry, no longer at the scene, and you can see we are inside of the box object. And we can very quickly toggle between geometry and object mode with the F8 key. That's right. So those of you coming from Maya will feel right at home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... Um, I'm going to push F8 until we're back inside component mode. And let's talk very briefly about the about components. components. <laughs> to do that and to make things very clear, I'm going to hide out these other objects because when we're down at component level, we have the ability to hide any object we're not currently looking at. And we can do that with um, the uh, visibility button up uh, here. Yeah, this is something really nice to point out. When you're working inside geometry like this, working down at the SOPS level, you might not want to see all of the other objects in your scene because you're focusing, just keep in mind, when you're in this geometry node like this, you are focusing on the creation of a specific model. Okay? Exactly. That's the whole idea. You're working on this one object down in the creation of the geometry itself. So by default, we can see all of the other models in your scene, all the other objects that are basically also in existence up at the object level. So what Steve's about to show you is we have the ability to ghost them or just to hide them out so that we're focusing only on the model we're currently working on. So we are by default on show all objects. That's what we've got here. We're seeing the other objects. If we come down to ghost, they will be grayed out. I'm actually going to turn them to hide so we don't even see them at all. And with that, I'm going to home up on our box. So if we bring our box over into wireframe, we can see that we have a structure to our box. And what builds up this structure? Well, we can take a look at the various different components by right clicking on our geometry select mode. And we're just going to take a look at points, edges, and primitives. These are the basic building blocks of a polygonal model. So let's take a look at points. We can see we have eight points in our box. They are a single location in 3D space. And they're 
in English terms, we're dealing with the corners of our box. Mm -hmm. From points, we can get edges. One edge runs between two different points, and one point can belong to multiple different edges. And we can see we have 12 edges in our box. And edges will define faces. A face is surrounded by a number of edges. You may hear the term tries, meaning a face that has three edges, or quads, meaning one that has four edges, as is the case with our box. So a face is surrounded by edges. And you'll also notice when in wireframe we see our face normals. That's these little maroon-colored lines. If we're not in wireframe and we wish to see face normals, we have the ability to turn on face normals down here by clicking on our display primitive normals. Mm -hmm. So what exactly are face normals? Well, a face can be thought of as having two sides, a front-facing side and a back-facing side. And what do we mean by that? Well, we have two sides to our face that we can think of here. We have the side that this normal is sticking out of and the other side of our face. Now, why would we want our face to have two sides? Well, we can determine based on is the normal pointing towards us or away from us if a face is facing us or the back side of that face is exactly. facing us. Otherwise, how would you know? Exactly, because otherwise you'd just be having a face that's looking at us, you wouldn't know which side of that face we're seeing. So we use the face normals to determine between the two different sides that a face has. And that's going to be very useful because when selecting in components, we have the ability to select front and back facing. That means we're going to select any faces, whether they're facing towards us or away from us. The ability to select only front facing or only back facing, which I will demonstrate now. So with front and back facing activated, if I marquee select all of these guys, you'll notice that all of our faces have been selected. Now if we turn on front facing only and do the same, you'll notice that only the three faces whose normals were pointing towards the camera, but not the three faces whose normals when we selected were pointing away from the camera because they're back facing. Only our front facing faces were selected. Or we can select back facing only, and that will grab just our back facing faces. So let's grab and put our tool back into front and back facing. And I'm going to deal with points for a second to just talk about some of the other things we can do when we're dealing with components of a object. So if we were to grab some points, we could right click in space and say select no geometry, that would deselect everything, or we can select all geometry. With a specific selection, we can right click in space and come down to invert selection, which has the hotkey control plus I. And that's very useful if you're modeling and you wish to make selections quickly. You may wish to deselect everything very quickly. So um, with that, I guess the only thing left to point out is now that we're dealing with components, we can't get back by default to those other objects. So let's bring back the visibility of those other objects. And uh, I'll explain exactly what I mean by that statement. So I'm dealing with components on this object. And to make things very clear, let's deal with primitives. So I'm dealing with the primitives on this box. Now, I can't select primitives on the sphere. I'm trying to select primitives on the sphere, but I can't. And I can't select primitives on the tube because we're dealing now with the box object. We've come inside the box object and we're dealing with its components. Now, to jump over into another object and to select components of that object, we can double click with the left mouse button on the object and do take uh, attention to our path gadget and notice we're going to jump out of our box object and now into the geometry for the object we do select. So if I double click on the sphere, we're now inside our sphere object at top level. We can select the primitives of the sphere, but we can no longer select primitives of our box. And likewise, if I double click on the tube. So with that, is there anything else that you'd like to add? I think that's pretty much for just an introduction to basic selections. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So, all right. Well, with that, that is going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.